We have found uh, cover-ups, we found destruction of samples in the laboratories, we found payments of money in order to conceal uh, doping tests, uh, among others. Well, for 2016, uh, our, our recommendation uh, is that, is that uh, the Russian Federation be suspended. Russia has been the highlight of most international and national news channels recently. While everyone is discussing the power and position of the country and other global leaders in the Russia-Ukraine matter, many are wondering about the absence of the Russian flag in the recent Olympics. Well, it's because they are banned from international sports tournaments. Wondering why? You'll get to know in this video. In this video, we will discuss why Russia got banned from the Olympics. things first. Why did Russia get banned from the Olympics? Well, because their athletes were high. Um, okay, professional tone. Russia received a two-year ban from the World Anti-Doping Agency for its state-sponsored doping program. Between December 17, 2020 and December 17, 2022, no athlete can represent Russia at the Olympics, Paralympics or World Championships. Systematic doping of Russian athletes has resulted in 46 Olympic medals being stripped from Russia. Russia has the most competitors who have been caught doping at the Olympics Games in the world. Doping amongst Russian competitors is distinct from doping among nationals of other countries in that. Rather doping being an individual choice, it is state-sponsored and systematic with Russian state being found to have supplied steroids and other drugs to the sports people. Due to widespread violations of anti-doping regulations, including an attempt to sabotage ongoing investigations by the manipulation of computer data, the World Anti-Doping Agency 2019 banned the Russian Federation from all major sporting events, including the Olympic Games, for four years. In 2020, the Court of Arbitration for Sports reduced the ban period to two years, following an appeal by Russia. Competitors from Russia, meanwhile, may take part in international competitions under a neutral flag and a designation known as ROC. Athletes competing under the ROC designation cannot wear the Russian flag or any other national symbol on their uniform. If their uniform says Russia, they must also include neutral athlete or something equivalent in the same size. Wait. So what is the ROC, you ask? Well, viewers tuning into the figure skating and women's hockey in 2022 Winter Olympics were likely to notice a particular name popping up on their screens, ROC. Olympic team. The abbreviation isn't for a country, but it's actually for a group of athletes competing not under their own flag, but rather under the iconic five-ring Olympic banner. And there's a reason for it. ROC stands for Russian Olympic Committee, the national committee representing Russia. The team doesn't wear the name or flag of any country. Instead, their kits show a badge that at a glance looks purely generic with the Olympic rings underneath a flame. Viewers of previous Olympics will recall that the designation was also used during the recent Tokyo Games and the term Olympic Athlete from Russia or OAR was used in the Pyeongchang in 2018. The Russian athletes will be competing under the altered moniker flag because of a decision reached by international officials in 2017 that found the country had engaged in a state-sponsored doping program providing athletes with performance-enhancing drugs. Ultimately, dozens of athletes were barred from competition, numerous medals were stripped from athletes who had competed in previous events, and Russian political leaders were not allowed to attend previous editions of the Olympics. When an ROC athlete wins a gold medal, the Russian anthem will not be played. Vitalina Batshershkina won the ROC's first gold in the 10-meter pistol event during the Tokyo Olympics last summer and was serenaded by music from Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto No. 1, 
which will also be played for other ROC medalists. Well, how did Russia get caught in the first place? In 2016, Dr. Grigory Rotchenkov blew the whistle on Russia's state-run doping program, revealing a deep web of deception and fraud that he had once helped facilitate. This revolution led to the total ban of Russia from the 2018 Winter Olympics and intensified the debate over corruption in sports. After fleeing from Russia for fear of retaliation, Dr. Rotchenkov now lives a precarious life in the United States, relying on whistleblower protections and fearful that Russian agents may one day come knocking. There's even the Oscar-winning documentary, Icarus. Were you the mastermind that cheated the Olympics? Yes. Which chronicles Dr. Rotchenkov's journey from complicit head of Russia's anti-doping laboratory to the courageous whistleblower. It describes the elaborate system Dr. Rotchenkov once led to bypass doping testing. He further went on to detail the punishments levied on the Russian government by the International Olympic Committee IOC. His attorney, Mr. Walden, said that the IOC has insufficiently punished Russia for its state-sponsored doping program by not fully banning Russia from the 2018 Winter Olympics Games in Pyeongchang. In addition, most of the 43 lifetime bans of doped Russian athletes have been overturned by the Court of Arbitration for Sport. And how did Russia react to all of this? Well, I think from all the recent events in line, we know Russia is not the chill cool guy who agrees to their mistakes and lets go of things. So as expected, Russia has not accepted responsibility and instead seeks to retaliate against Dr. Rotchenkov. For example, Russian officials have harassed Dr. Rotchenkov's family, confiscated his property and launched an information campaign to discredit him. In addition, three of the guilty Russian athletes have sued Dr. Rotchenkov in New York, State Supreme, for defamation. The Russian government has even retaliated against the IOC and World Anti-Doping Agency by hacking the IOC's and WADA's computers, disclosing confidential documents and even threatening to bring sanctions against IOC members and WADA executives. Mr. Walden said that the IOC's reaction was ineffective due to corruption, complicity or ineptitude. When asked about the motivation behind Russia's doping program, Mr. Walden noted that the doping program is unique to Russia because of the impact on sports in Russian society and added that the success of Sochi Olympics greatly boosted Vladimir Putin's approval ratings. So, what can be done? Well, Mr. Walden gave a legislative solution to combat Russian doping. He proposed creating a doping long-arm statute, similar to the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act or amending the Controlled Substance Act to give the United States power to persecute foreign officials and athletes that engage in doping and provide whistleblower protection. But will this solution be accepted? Well, that's a long shot. And keeping global politics in mind, things are not that simple. But you know what's simple? Subscribing to the Vault of Vox family. You know the drill. Hit that subscribe button, comment your views, like our videos, share them with fellow enthusiasts. And until we meet next, stay curious, stay awesome. Vault of Vox, signing off.